Wahao Buddhism is a religion based on the teachings of the Buddha. It is so named because it was established in Wahao village, Jiao Dok province in Aulak or Vietnam. The two words, Hua Hao, also connotate harmony and goodness. It was founded by Prophet Hun Fu So in 1939. At a young age, Prophet, Prophet Hun Fu So began to heal people through the use of simple herbs, water, and acupuncture. He also composed six scriptures and hundreds of verses and prose of transcendental values. His style of writing is comprehensive, concise, very appealing, and easy to understand. Today, we present excerpts of the teachings of Prophet Hun Fu So entitled, Clearing Doubts, A Tranquil Mind Achieves Wisdom, Present Life Retribution, and The Dead Cannot Eat. Clearing Doubt Around the end of the summer in 1940, the master was staying at the house of the village registrar, Vo Mao Tan, in Kanto City. Every day is the same. In the daytime, the master treated patients and gave lectures to encourage people to practice spiritually. In the evening, he would discuss and explain spiritual doctrines. Living nearby was Mr. Fan Ji Hien also called Sao Ving, who came every night to listen to the master's lectures. It seemed the teachings pervaded his heart. When he got home, he pondered about his past deeds, words, and thoughts, and felt that he was unworthy as a human being, not to talk about a Buddha or a saint. Eventually, he concluded, I cannot practice spiritually. Thus, with doubt in his heart, he dared not think about spiritual practice to attain enlightenment. The next morning, he came again to listen to the Dharma or true teaching. Mr. Vien noticed that the master looked directly at him first, then slowly shifted his gaze to everyone else. The master then said, Anyone who has ever listened to the Dharma or true teachings would have heard that, in comparison to our suffering world, the pure land of Amitabha Buddha is very blissful and precious. There is no need to worry about food and clothing, or old age, sickness or death. But today, I do not want to talk about the Pure Land, because it seems so far removed from you. It's difficult for you to believe and accept, but I will talk about our capital city, so that you can easily understand and believe. For example, a person returned from Saigon and recounted to those who had never been there. Saigon has 9 to 10 counties with streets and cars. There are buildings that are 5, 7 stories high, bright electric lights of all colors and shapes, manufactured goods, ships, boats, etc. Upon hearing that, everyone has the intention to go there at least once, but among them, there are three types of people with different ways of thinking. The first type is a person who has a lot of money and thinks, I just get in a car, sit there for four or five hours, and I'll be there. There's no need to rush. So he procrastinates and still hasn't left. The second type is a person who has all kinds of boats at his disposal, and he thinks, from here to Saigon, it'd take me two to three days to get there. I'll just take my time, and we'll go later. Therefore, after a long time, he still hasn't reached the destination. The third type is a person who is very poor, who lacks everything, money, rice, boats. But when he heard about Saigon, he is determined to get there and sets out enthusiastically, even if he has to walk and beg for food and shelter along the way. As a result of his determination and perseverance, he arrives at Saigon within nine or ten days. Meanwhile, the other two types of people who have everything they need haven't yet departed. The search for truth and spiritual practice is the same for every one of us. If we are not decisive and lack determination, when can we escape from the realm of suffering and pain, birth and death? 
When he heard the master's explanation, Mr. Salving realized that the master wanted to clear his doubt. Immediately, he came before the master and asked to take refuge in the three treasures, or the Buddha, the Dharma, or true teaching, and the Sangha, or the community of monks, and commenced his spiritual practice. A tranquil mind achieves wisdom. If one knows the word cultivation, a tranquil mind achieves wisdom. During a trip to encourage the farmers in the summer of 1945, when he arrived at Rock Gia, Kian Giang province, the master rested overnight at the home of Mr. Nyun Kong Wa, a government clerk. During the conversation, Mr. Hao asked, Respected teacher, I think that a person who has been defiled by the mundane life for 30, 40 years, like me for instance, will need to practice spiritually for a similar number of years to be cleansed of the worldly dust. If he practices with a lesser number of years, perhaps he can't become enlightened and achieve liberation? The master looked at Mr. Hua and cheerfully replied, Look at that river. If the water still flows, the wind still blows, and the waves continue to roll, then no matter the length of time, the water will still be turbid. But if the wind ceases, the waves abate, and the river stands still, then the water will be clear. It doesn't need to wait for the passage of time. Therefore, if a spiritual practitioner knows how to still the mind, learns to be unaffected by the external world, then his heart is at peace, his mind is tranquil, wisdom is naturally developed, and worldly attachments are severed. That is liberation. Mr. Nguyen Kuang Hua was able to understand its significance. Thus his heart was filled with an immense gladness and respect. One day, around the end of winter in 1939, after the master gave a lecture, he suddenly saw a boat docking, and after staking the pole, a man stepped ashore and went straight to the master. Bowing with his palms together, he said, Sir, my family lives in Tan Chao. Three months ago, my son suddenly became seriously ill. His body is covered with boils, his skin hardens, his speech is different than normal and he suffers in pain all day and night. My family has tried all possible medical treatments, spending all our money, yet his illness hasn't been alleviated one bit. He only feels better when he insists that his body be submerged in water. So lately, he often stays in the river, sometimes for one to two hours. He refuses to come up even when I call him. Today, my oldest son and I tied him up, submerged him in a water-filled boat and brought him here to ask for your help. The master looked at him and said, Go down and untie him and bring him up here. The old man went down to the boat but hesitated to untie him because he was afraid that his son would jump into the river and swim away. So he went back up to ask for the master's opinion again. The master instructed, Just follow my instruction. He won't run away. Don't worry. The man obediently went down to untie his son and brought him up. The master held a glass of water, looked directly at the patient standing in front of him and said, His family has suffered a lot these three months. That should be enough. Thus said, the master splashed the water into the patient's face. The patient fell unconscious. A few minutes later, the master told Mr. Nam Chon to help him up. The young man regained his consciousness and was normal again. The master turned to his father and said, Previously, you killed a mother and child. That's why you have to reap the retribution. The man immediately replied, Respected sir, as a child till now, I've never killed anyone. Try to remember again, you have killed a mother and child at the same time. The father pondered for a while, then put his palms together. Sir, I've remembered it very clearly. I've never killed anyone my entire life. 
But there's one thing, my family has always earned our living by spearing fish. In the past, I speared a crocodile, brought it up, and a few minutes later, I speared a young crocodile. We took them home and sold their flesh and used that money for our family's expenses. That's all. The master then said, All sentient beings have a soul, a body, the desire to live, and fear death. They know pain, resentment, similar to humankind. Every action has retribution. That's why I said you've killed a mother and her child. From now on, your family must repent, find a new occupation to earn your living, then the bad karma or retribution will gradually dissolve and your son will be cured. When they heard the master's explanation, father and sons were very frightened. They bowed to the master in repentance and took refuge in the three treasures, the Buddha, the Dharma or true teaching, and the Sangha or community of monks, then took their leave. The dead cannot eat. One afternoon in April 1940, Mr. Le Phak Hun went to Taoden to listen to the Master's lecture. After expounding on the Buddha's teachings to the congregation, the conversation turned to the discussions of the rites of making offerings to the dead. Master Hun turned to Mr. Hun and said, My dear village chief, how many bowls of rice do you eat when you are healthy? Mr. Kuyun answered immediately, Respected Master, when in good health, I can eat five to seven bowls of rice. The Master asked again, And when you're sick, how many bowls of rice can you eat? Respected Master, when I am sick, I eat about one or two bowls of rice. The Master asked without stopping a beat, When you are dead, how many bowls of rice can you eat? With such an unexpected question, Mr. Kayun stayed quiet without answering because he did not know what the Master wanted to impart. The Master repeated once again, I'm really asking you for an answer. Bewildered, Mr. Quinn replied reluctantly, Respected Master, when I am dead, I can't really eat. The Master then spoke gently, That's right, sir. When we are dead, we can never eat. The reason the descendants observe the death anniversary of the ancestors is to pay tribute to and express gratitude for giving them life and for nurturing them. It is also to remember the day of their eternal separation. It is meant to show that they always love them, in death as in life. But if you kill ducks and chickens, then it would be harder for the soul of the deceased to be liberated. After the master lectured for a while, he went inside. At that time, the brethren debated about this matter, yet none could come up with a solution. When they saw the master came back out, a fellow practitioner stood up and asked, Respected master, so how shall we make offerings to our ancestors? Please guide us, master. The master replied, Less offerings, less sin. More offerings, more sin. Afterward, he read the poem, Fulfilling Filial Piety, to everyone, advising them to make vegetarian offerings to their ancestors. In making offering to the ancestors, killing animals through a wrong belief, it's baffling to feed the dead while we mistreat the living, so strange. Be a pious child the Buddhist way. Make vegetarian offering to your deceased parent. This is repaying kindness properly. Light-hearted, the liberated souls will soar high. <laughs>